What if I told you, you need to stop going to work or you're never going to have a good relationship? But what if I also told you, maybe if you're mindful at work, you might have a better relationship. We're going to have Mike Laurie and Marcus Burnett help us on this episode today. So let's keep going. Hey, 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 Conscious Crew. Welcome back to the Conscious Creative Corner Podcast. I am your host, Sia, the Transparent Therapist, where, you know, we unpack trauma to heal that relationship. Today on the corner, we have Marcus Brunette and Mike Laurie, aka Will Smith and Martin Lawrence. I had to give it to y'all today because I 100% love Bad Boys. For you guys who don't know about Bad Boys, Bad Boys is an action comedy where they have two friends who are narcotic detectives going throughout um, the city of Miami trying to obviously solve crimes. But within it, they are bumping into some roadblocks with solving the, the case and their own relationships and friendships. I thought it was really interesting for us to kind of debunk what's happening for these two because we go into watching this film not thinking that there's trauma, but there is. So with Mike, and for y'all who don't know who Mike is, <laughs> Mike is Will Smith. He comes from a wealthy background, um, which they don't really talk about a lot. Um, and I don't know if that was just a producer's way of just kind of making him a little bit more relatable. But although his background was okay, he had a lot of trauma coming into like his own. Um, he is a risk taker and we see that a lot within the film. Um, he has a lot of emotional detachment, which means that he doesn't connect a lot with women. Um, almost, almost, I, I don't know what it's like with other people because we only see the connection between him and Martin, um, which is um, Marcus. But he has a lot of emotional detachment. And his trauma definitely manifests itself within the relationships that he's having throughout the film. Um, he definitely has a fear of vulnerability in relationships. And then when we look at Marcus, who is Martin, he is married. He has children. He contrasts from Mike a lot. He is a little bit more reserved, but he's committed to solving crime. He struggles with the stress, right? and danger of his job and wanting to still show up for his family and provide. And I think his trauma just definitely is a constant worry about providing and being there for his family because Mike keeps getting him into these ridiculous situations. They cope really differently. And so when you're thinking about what's happening within your own life and how you cope when things like you suffer from loss or just a friend that's always getting you into trouble, it might look different from each other. So in respect to trauma, Mike, again, which is Will Smith, he uses a lot of humor, right? He's a playboy. He's like a gallus from the last episode from which I remember. Remember I taught y'all that? Um, he just kind of masks his pain with everything that he's been through, through like his persona, his humor. Um, while Marcus relies a little bit more on his cons like being conservative, conservative. And we also see that he's really family oriented. So he could be using his family as like a crutch, so to speak, to not identify what's happening for him in his life. This parallels real life for y'all, right? Um, thinking about the pressures of high risk jobs. So those of you who have, who are in a relationship or dating people who have high risk jobs, right? Um, so like firefighters, um, police officers, those people who are in direct contact with violence, um, those people who are in direct contact with diseases. Um, we can even look at nurses as a high-risk job, doctors as a high-risk job, because these things are putting their life, the longevity of their life in danger. Your partner might not be okay with that though. And so you might overexert yourself and put your all into your job because you're not sure how to address your partner and their worries. Or it could be vice versa, right? You, Your partner might not know how to address, if you're the partner, you're not sure how to address with your, your spouse or the person you're dating. Like, listen, I don't want you to do that job anymore because it's risky. Um, and all of these trauma just root back into like the way in which you've attached in your life. And so I have a, I have a scene that I want you guys to watch um, really quick. Because uh, we know sometimes the platforms will flag me. But in these scenes, we're looking at how Marcus is trying to explain to his wife, like, look, Mike put me into this situation. 
I was going to tell you what I was doing, but I didn't want to. Um, he's really trying to fend for himself and it's jeopardizing the relationship that he's having with his wife because he is now lying. Um, the trauma of the job really does put him into a situation where he's thinking like, I don't want to lose my family, but obviously I need to make this spread. And I appreciated this scene because he is still trying to stand in the gap and, um, look up for, look out for his friend. Whereas, uh, I don't know if Mike would have done the same, which he, which we see in other, um, series, like in the other films where he will stick himself out, but let's just take a look at what's going on. Hi, can I help you? Yes. I'm here to kill my husband, Marcus Burnett. And that'd be the tall one or the short one? The short one. That's so. And so here, this is Julie, I believe. Julie is the person that they took from um, the narcotics books in the very first scene. And again, if you guys have not seen this movie, please go watch it. I don't know where you can watch it. I'm sure it's out now because, you know, the other movie is out. But let's keep going. Shit, ringing the... Oh! Bang! Um, Teresa. Uh, let me get your husband. Marcus, get over here. Okay. So, see, he's still keeping up this persona because he wants to be able to keep his job that makes the bread, but then also please his wife, which is such a hard position to be in, right? How do you please your wife, keep your job, and then please your friend who who is kind of crazy? So, let's go. We're not arguing about it. Okay. I'm raising my... All right, here, baby. Believe me, we wanted to tell you. You know what? It really doesn't matter anymore, Marcus. Mike, Kojak, whatever your name is, okay? Aside from the fact, I'll tell you something else. If his wife can find us, I'm a lot better off on my own. So a few seconds back, um, Mike is just talking to his wife and explaining, like, look, I was going to tell you, but, you know, this and this happened. I ain't even going, you know... Nah, we not arguing about it. Okay, I'm raising my... All right, here, baby, believe... What I appreciated about this, though, is Marcus or Martin, you know, Marcus is like, hold on, I'm being real self-aware. I'm realizing that I'm raising my voice. And to be honest, out of all the films I've ever seen, I haven't really seen um, writers write this into a black man's script where he's like, hold on, I'm realizing that I'm wrong. I'm taking accountability for my voice. I'm taking accountability partially for the situation I'm in. And I thought it was just very insightful for him to take a step back and say, like, hold on, let me change my tone. Because a lot of women do not experience that or a lot of partners don't experience that in general. General, and we want to use this to ensure that we still have like soft startups, right? So in relationships, soft startups are the way in which you're engaging in the conversation and the way in which a conversation starts is usually how it was going in. All right. So if you're coming in hot and your partner's like, hold on, I just, I'm just here to have a conversation. It might not work well, but if you're coming in with a tone of, hold on, I understand what's happening. Let me hear you out. That's considered a soft startup. Yes, there's still a problem at hand, but we are going to look at this problem and we're going to address this problem in a respectful manner, even though both of us are very elevated in the way in which we're feeling right now. And I just, like I said, really appreciated how he showed up in that instance. And so let's think about how this is impacted within their relationship. So Martin and Will's relationship or Marcus and Mike's relationship. It's a very strained relationship. And we see that in Bad Boys 2, 3, all the ones that you guys have seen already. And if you haven't, they both have trauma bonded. And we don't talk about this a lot, but trauma bonding just looks like the experience in which you and I have gone through something. And now we... Uh, share this experience and we are bonding because of this experience. And that typically happens with people who are in high risk jobs and they have partners with them. So Mike and Marcus are trauma bonded, but the relationship kind of shows how deep bonds can form through shared struggles. It also shows how deep bonds are, are formed through shared struggles, but it, it pulls us away from 
our own self-awareness or how we are interacting with the world. And we see this with Marcus where it's just like, okay, I'm going to go along with your plan. Deep down inside, I know I don't want to do this plan because it's going to require me to lie to my wife. Um, and it ha- it's, a repeated pa- it's a repeated pattern throughout this whole entire um, movie and just series. So for their relationship, it's strained because Marcus is not always telling Mike, like, look, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. I've been doing this for too long. I don't want to do this. You're too hot headed. You're too trigger happy. You're just doing too much. And Marcus, it, it causes that tension, right? But it's so hard for us to pull away from these people we've bonded to because it, they're a false sense of security. And now I'm not saying your friends are not great at securing your relationship. But what I am saying is that sometimes we have friends that are going to be in our life and um, they're not really there to help us. And they're not doing this intentionally. It's just their intentions do not align with our own intentions. Marcus's intention was to do his job, get out, go home, be with his wife and kids. Marcus, Mike's intention is, I'm about to come. I'm going to blow everything up. He ain't say that, y'all. <laughs> but I'm going to do what I need to do in order to get the job done, no matter how many heads we have to chop off, no matter how many relationships we have to go through. Because again, Mike is emotionally detached and people can get emotionally detached from things that they've been through. His emotional detachment, if y'all remember in the first scene, is just an example where his friend um, was killed. His friend was killed. And this is Julie's friend. Um, and that just adds another body to his trauma. And so he's just like, why am I, what am I connecting for? Why am I going to connect to these people if I'm just going to lose them? Right. And I'm, I bet if we develop this character a little bit more, if we look back into the character development of Mike, he probably did have a lot of loss in his childhood too, even though he came from like an okay background versus Marcus, um, the worry that he imposes throughout the film, it makes me believe that the character development there is he might not have had a secure attachment um, as well in in his childhood. It could have been more of an anxious attachment where it was like, hey, I'm trying to hold on to you. I'm so scared. Don't go nowhere, wife. Don't go nowhere, wife. And I can't remember the wife's name, but it was just a very impactful experience there. I think from my perspective with these unhealthy dynamics, it's super important for us to remember that avoidance typically happens when we go through trauma. Hypervigilance um, typically happens. Um, Emotional intimacy can be disrupted when we go through trauma. And y'all, this T word is real big, right? So I want y'all to think about trauma as an unresolved hurt. And I might just start saying that so that y'all can relate a little bit more. An unresolved hurt is something that you've been through, an experience you've been through, but it hasn't quite yet been solved because you are having these visceral experiences, these somatic experiences, the experiences where you're realizing like, oh my gosh, my heart rate is going up every time I pass that street. Or every time I'm in the presence of my friend, my heart rate is going up because I know this friend, aka Mike, is always going to put me into this situation that we don't necessarily need to be in. These are things that you have to look out for. So as an EMDR therapist, Um, A trauma therapist, EMDR, for those those of you who are new to the podcast, it stands for Eye Movement Desensitization and Reprocessing. However, we don't always have to do eye movement because good old COVID and the researchers, we realized that tapping works as well, right? And so what we're doing is we're taking an event that has elevated you or you have a distressing association with. And then we're going to take these memories and we're going to reprocess them correctly so that your body doesn't feel it. I think Mike would have had a very great experience going through EMDR, Um, just going through all of the hurt that he's been through, the grief that he has not processed, helping him to understand some of the emotions that are tied to what's happening for him when he is seeing a friend laying on the ground um a friend at that like we said in the first scene or just going through all the bodies that he had to rack up people in the army go through the same thing it's like a form of ptsd but i think in this film mike just uses a lot of his emotional detachment to get through it um and it's not i don't want you guys to take his friendliness his playboyness as an emotional connection because it just fills a void it's a void that he hasn't addressed yet i think Mike or Marcus would have benefited from EMDR when he, if we went through his, his history, 
right? Thinking about how he feels when he can't provide for his family. What kind of feelings that elicits, elicits? And when did he first start feeling that? Maybe he was a child. And again, I don't have the character developments for these characters, obviously, because I'm not the director or producer of this film. But maybe the... I'm pretty sure if I sat down with the the, the writers, they might have said that because when you're doing character development, you have to understand the history of the person as well. So if he was sitting in my office, I would have said... All right, when you feel like you're not going to provide for your wife and your kids, what kind of feelings come up for you? Where do you feel it in your body? When's the last time you felt that? And I'm pretty sure he might have felt it when he was growing up as a child and he and he saw his mother or father not being able to provide and what that felt like. And he carried that emotional core wound with him into his marriage. We are bringing core wounds into our relationships and we have to stop doing that. Our relationships are not going to thrive that way. These unresolved hurts definitely impact us. It impacts the way in which we're interacting with our family members, our friends. We're seeing it here in the Bad Boys film. Um, just to kind of jump forward, there's a time in which in Bad Boys 2 where Marcus is like, yeah, I can't do this no more. Or maybe it's the third one. He's like, I can't keep putting myself into these positions because you're just crazy. And that's him kind of looking or etching for a way out. And I thought it was pretty impactful for us to recognize that because it's not every, not everyone has the ability to realize like, hey, the behaviors that I'm engaging in are not helpful at all. Um, So the benefit would have for both of them would have led to healthier relationships. Um, for Marcus, it could have helped him manage his stress and anxiety a little bit more while he's on the job, especially because you have Mike, who is like a polar opposite of him, who is ready to dive into anything. And Marcus is like, nah, I got, I got a family to think about. And so it's important for us to just recognize his overall experience and what that means for him. And, a lot of us don't have people that we can talk to, which is why I created the texting community where if you're able to just send a quick, t well, we're, we're sending you quick texts for you to reflect and be a little bit more self-aware of what's happening for you. And if you wanted to join, you would just hit or send a text to, sh to 860-401-0207 and you would text the word stress. So S-T-R-E-S-S -S, to 860 401-0207 and there is where you would receive texts, join the community, just talk to other like-minded people who might not have trauma bonded with your specific experience. But what they have done is taken the time out to explore some of the things that they've been through um, in life. They're exploring how to feel a little bit more connected um, to themselves. So if we're bouncing back to write bad boys, some of the scenes are pretty interesting, right? Because obviously it's action packed. And so we have to keep the vibes going. Uh, but other, other times they're pretty intimate, intimate in the sense of you see Mike talking to Marcus about things that he's been through, um, but they're not really putting a trauma lens on it. But me as a trauma therapist, I'm looking like, oh, that's trauma, right? And I think if we highlighted a little bit more for people, like talking about your unresolved hurts, talking about your stress, it's going to help. I know when we talk about this big T word, nobody wants to align themselves with trauma. Nobody wants to say like, oh yeah, I've been through trauma. I've been through some stuff. It doesn't feel good. And so I appreciate it in this film too, just the subtle drops of speaking back and forth between Mike and Marcus, some of the things that they've been through and how they're processing what they've just seen. Processing goes a long way when you have someone safe to do it with. And I wouldn't doubt that they both feel safe with one another, despite the situations they keep going through. I think the safety that they have in one, an one, other, one another is pretty beautiful. I, I just wish <laughs> that... Mike wouldn't put Marcus into these situations as much, which is why I'm thinking, okay, does Mike know that he is the problem too? If you guys are watching this at this point, y'all need to go take the assessment. It's free. I have a free assessment and it's linked below where it's called the, are you the problem assessment? And we're going through, we're looking at 
what has happened in your relationships or your dating relationships. There's so many avenues, right? How are you showing up communication wise? How are you showing up physically? Are you allowing space for your partner to vent? Are you allowing space for yourself to be open? And there's about 38 questions that you can use um, and take. And then I generate a report for you. And from there, you can see which areas you can improve on if you've been the problem in those areas. I think Mike and Marcus should have taken this assessment because it's gonna it would have helped them understand their shortcomings. It would have given Mike the insight to say like, hey, just because I emotionally detach doesn't mean Marcus has to emotionally detach because he has a family. And, and Mike is aware of that. Right. I just think because he's his foot is not really grounded in reality, um, he puts Marcus in jeopardy, not realizing how much he can lose because the things Marcus has to lose, Mike doesn't necessarily have. Marcus or Mike doesn't have kids like how Marcus does. Mike doesn't have a wife like how Marcus does. Um, we see him subtly trying like he loves what he sees I just don't think he's deser- he doesn't think he's deserving of it and so if you fall in line with Mike and Marcus this assessment is 100% for you it's gonna show you what areas you can try to improve upon especially when you are in a dating space and you want to meet a partner that is going to give you everything you need and that you can also give You can't give if you don't know what areas in which you need to work on or where you're lacking. And this is where the assessment comes in. Again, y'all, it's free. Take it if you want. Take it if you don't. Doesn't matter. But what will matter is if you do take it, you'll have another level of understanding of where you can improve. You can't go wrong with that. All right, y'all. So you know what time it is, right? It's for the culture. Yeah. All right, so y'all know the song, Bad Boys, Bad Boys, What You Gonna Do? Where that song came from? I'm gonna give y'all two seconds to think. Jamaica. So in 1987, the song Bad Boys was produced or created by a band called The Inner Circle. And y'all know y'all heard it everywhere. So if you're living in the States, or actually, not even, you don't even have to live in the States. Um, anywhere where the show Bad Boys or oh, sorry, the show Cops is syndicated. You, it was the theme song for Cops. And Cops obviously went around. It's a re, It was like a reality TV show. Now I think about it. Before reality TV was reality TV. Cops, they were filming cops going around, making these busts. Um, and it's crazy how times have changed, right? Because now it's just like, we don't want to see no busts from cops. But before, we was all into, let me see what's going on on TV. Let me see what's going on in the cop world. And the song Bad Boys was the intro for cops. And then obviously when the Bad Boys franchise, like the movies that we're talking about right now, came out, I want to say in 19 something, right? Um, That became the theme song. So we have to big up Jamaica because they're doing their thing, <laughs> right? But this reggae band, Inner Circle, that's the only song I know from Inner Circle. So now it makes me want to go and listen to something else. But y'all know I always drop a little something for my culture because my cultural trauma is real. Generational trauma is real. And so I am stopping that right now by including this into the episode in all my episodes for that matter. So as a recap, y'all, Bad Boys, great movie, 100%, hands down. I think it's probably the best out of all three. Um, Wasn't really feeling the third one. Haven't seen the new one. Second one was kind of cool, but best out of all, out of the franchise, but just some key points to remember is the importance of addressing some of your past hurts because in your work space is going to be affected and your relationship is going to be affected. And because your work, if you're in a high risk um, job, might even inflict some new trauma or some new hurts that might impact your relationship as well. And we don't want to go into that right? We want to make sure that if you're mindful at work of how you're showing up, if you're mindful of how you're interacting outside of work, it should be like a smooth transition. We're not perfect. So I understand that it's not going to look smooth all the time, but we can, we can, we could try, right? Another takeaway here is when we're exploring our past 
hurts. We want to make sure we're doing it in a very safe and secure way. In the film, we see them talking, right, which is great. You can talk to a friend all day. But if you really want to try to resolve the hurts that you're feeling, consider getting a coach. Consider getting a therapist. Consider getting an expert in the field of trauma or unresolved hurt to help you walk through and navigate some of the things that you've been through. We see in the film that Marcus is always getting himself into trouble because of Mike. And I believe it's because he wants to do better for his family. He just doesn't know how to let go of a friend or to be more assertive with a friend. And all those things are rooted in some unresolved hurts from your past. So you want to make sure you're looking into that with someone I hope this episode helped you in some way. I'm just asking for y'all to share this with someone who you know seen bad boy, but didn't realize that there was some trauma or underlying trauma there because baby, this movie has it. So make sure you guys share with a friend, hit that like button. You don't even have to subscribe because I only, I only want you if you want me. If you want me, hit the subscribe subscribe button, please. And thanks. All right, y'all. Walk good. Keep the vibes high. And I will see y'all on the next episode.